On the screen is a simple password that really shouldn't be being used out on the internet. Underneath is the algorithm used to encrypt and manage the password. The result you see is a long line of letters and numbers. There are multiple types of hashing algorithms you can use, shown on the screen, such as MD5 and SHA-256. When are these used? Well, it is used when you visit a website, such as LinkedIn, and you want to create an account. You would naturally put in a username and password, but it will also ask for other details such as name, age, email address, etc. All of those details are stored in plain text within the database, except for one of the details, which is the password. The password is not stored as plain text, but as a hash. The password passes through the hashing algorithm, in our example MD5, and spits out the hash. So the hash is stored in the database, not the password. In the event that there is a data breach from a hacker and the details are stolen, they will not be able to crack the hash. As you can see, the hash is too complex. Even if the hacker has the hash, a hash is a one-way function, and the plain text form of a hash cannot be obtained from the hash itself. The hackers will still have an individual's details, such as username, age, email address, and maybe their address. So this is still extremely serious. So when trying to log in with the hash, it is pointless anyway. And with multi-factor authentication in play now, it becomes much harder for the hacker to break into an account. At least for the password side of this, it is still paramount that your password is a lot more complex as we are about to explain. Remember what we said earlier, that you cannot reverse the process and extract a password from a hash, as hashing has been built as a one-way function. So what does the hacker do now? You'll be surprised how many people out there still use very easy passwords, even in a corporate environment. We have seen in previous videos how hackers can use applications such as John the Ripper and Fern for Wi-Fi. Here, we're going to introduce rainbow tables. These tables contain the password, the hashes of numerous commonly used passwords, along with their plain text forms. To see hashing in action online, you can visit sites such as onlinewebtoolkit.com, where you can create the hashes of passwords. A simple passwords hash would appear like this in a rainbow table. Crackstation.net is pretty cool, as it allows you to see the reverse process and deduce the password and algorithm used. Here, shown as MD5 and password123. Remember, rainbow tables are mostly hashes of the common style passwords. There will be many in a rainbow table, but if you use password managers or just a complex password, it will mitigate this risk considerably. Other methodologies of breaking in would be using dictionary and brute force attacks. In both attacks, hackers employ a word list, shown here in Kali Linux as an example. In the user share word lists directory, you can make your own targeted word list. If you look at the Rocky word list, it is enormous and gives you an idea of what is out there. Using the WC command, you can see that this word list has over 14 million entries. Pretty crazy. To make it even more difficult, nay impossible to crack passwords, is to use another technique called salting. Salting is when an extra set of random characters of added with the password can be at the beginning, middle, or end, or all. Every company has their own salt, which only the company will know. The salt is added before the hashing takes place. The output hash can now never be found in a rainbow table, and even word lists wouldn't stand a chance. Unless you are Mr. Robot, of course. Thank you so much for watching today. Please watch our videos on John the Ripper and Hydra to understand the password cracking process. And we will see you again next time for more on the G-Man channel.